technology. Um, I will now reconvene the meeting of the Williamsburg Game City County School Board. Can I have a board member certify closed session, please? Madam Chair, I certify that to the best of each member's knowledge, the Williamsburg James City County School Board, while in closed session, discussed only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements, as stated in Virginia law, and that only such public matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Mrs. Donner, is second. there a second? Oh, thank you, Mr. Ripple. Ms. Oliver? Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. Mr. Riffle. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. And Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. And can I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? Madam, Madam go ahead. Madam Chair, I move to approve the agenda as presented. Thank you, Mr. Hosang. Is second. there a second? Uh, thank you, Mr. Riffle. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. Mr. Riffle. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. Mrs. Donner. Aye. And Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. And we will now um, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. If you're able, Mrs. Uh, Donner, would you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of Thank you. So we will move on to um, item 4.01, announcements and superintendent report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Last week we celebrated nearly 900 graduates from the WJCC Schools Class of 2024. Collectively, our graduates received over 14 million in scholarships. They are now embarking on journeys to two and four year colleges, trades programs, careers, and the military. We wish them all the best in their future endeavors. I would like to remind everyone that from June 17th through August 8th, all schools and offices in the school division will be working summer hours. We'll be open to the public from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Thursday. Please note that we will be closed on Wednesday, June 19th in observance of Juneteenth, and on Thursday, July 4th in observance of Independence Day. And finally, I am proud to announce this evening that WJCC schools has earned the No Place for Hate designation at all 16 of our schools from the Anti-Defamation League during the 2023-24 school year. This recognition was achieved through a year-long student-driven effort to foster inclusivity and combat discrimination and bullying, involving activities like the WJCC Unity Pledge, student surveys, and student-led initiatives. We are looking forward to recognizing all schools at a school board meeting in August. Thank you, Madam Chair. That concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Dr. Heron. Were there any board member reports anyone wanted to share tonight? Okay. All right, then we will move on to our student and staff recognitions. Um, Mrs. Hundley, would you join me at the down below? Good evening, Madam Chairwoman. Tonight we are excited to honor several individuals and teams for outstanding accomplishments. While some of our honorees couldn't make it tonight, we want to recognize everyone who has earned these accomplishments. First, congratulations to Jamestown High School students for placing first overall at the 2024 Dominion Energy Envire Fund State Competition at Radford University. The team coached by Rebecca Elton, Amanda Mullane, and Charlie Dubay excelled securing third in oral presentation, second in special topic and, topic, and first in wildlife, aquatics, forestry, and solar. They now prepare for the international competition this summer in Geneva, New York. Please come forward to be recognized as your name is called. Caroline Bacher, Mia Bacher, Diego Cordero Munez, Tegan Ketterman, Beth Oman, Eleanor Rossi, Francis Smith. Mm -hmm. 
Next, congratulations to the Jamestown Theater team for securing first place in the VHSL One Act Regional Competition. Your hard work, dedication, and exceptional performances under the leadership of Harvey Stone have earned you well-deserved recognition. We celebrate the entire team for these outstanding achievements. Please come forward to be recognized as your name is called. Gracie Alexa, Lily Alexander, Jonathan Arnett, Maya Blackhurst, Landon Davis, Scarlett Gaines, Rowan Henderson, Reagan Hess, Jonathan Kistler, Callie Coleman, Ainsley Lang, Caitlin Luveris, Addie McKnight, Mia Meadows, Lucas Medema, Jay Mims, Canton Murphy, Beth Oman, Botany Papadopoulos, Sasha Ryan Polk, Jesse Query, Olivia Rabinowitz, Matthew Ramsey, Ra Ramida Sidaranpan, Sida mm -hmm. Ada Tanglo Ar Aguas, Co, Co Walkley, and Luke Wall. Warhill High School also secured two notable victories this year, achieving first place in their class at both the VHSL One Act, One Act Super Regional Competition and the VHSL One Act State Competition. Under the outstanding leadership of Jacob Noble, the team's hard work and dedication have earned them well-deserved accolades. Congratulations to the entire group for their remarkable successes. Please step forward to receive your recognition when called. Callie Beecham, Maddie Beecham, M. Connors, Portia Durr, Reagan Heim, Matthew Jones, Gabrielle Marino, Joshua Meadows, Stephen Raines, Abby Robinson, Ava Sherd, Casey Swanenberg, Cedar Wilson. Congratulations to Jamestown High School's girls outdoor track and field team for their accomplishments. The following student athletes have been named VHSL Class 4 Girls Outdoor Track and Field State Champions in the 4x800 relay. As your name is called, please come forward to be recognized. Claire Bauer, Kylie Brooks, Emily Dahl, and Rainey Mayo. Congratulations to Lafayette High School girls indoor track and field team for their accomplishments. The following student athletes have been named VHSL Class 3 girls indoor track and field state champions in the 4x200 relay. As your name is called, please come forward to be recognized. Kristen Harris, Ramaya Smith, Tatiana Turner, and Aaliyah White. And finally, we would like to invite Tristan Harris to be recognized as the VHSL Class 3 Boys Outdoor Track and Field State Champion. In the triple jump, Tristan broke the Lafayette High School triple jump record from 2005 and his tr jump ranks him as the fifth best triple jumper in the state of Virginia for all classes for the 2024 outdoor season. Woo. Once again, congratulations to all the students, coaches, and directors on your outstanding accomplishments this year. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. This concludes recognitions for this evening.
Thank you, Mrs. Donner. All right, we will now move on to um, our public comment portion. And then we'll turn it over to the Vice Chair once again. It is at this point in our meeting where citizens are invited to address the board. Those citizens desiring to speak have submitted speaker cards to the clerk prior to the start of tonight's meeting. These speakers are asked to come to the podium when their names are called, state their names for the record, and direct their comments to the chair of the board. It is in the board's interest and desire that all comments are heard and respected. Hence, the citizens are asked to not engage in applauding, verbal outbursts, or any other type of demonstrations during the presentations. Personnel matters are not considered in public meetings, therefore the board requests that all speakers refrain from making reference to specific individuals in any form or fashion. Though the board does not respond to your comments, your comments are heard and appreciated. Each speaker is allocated two minutes to make their presentation, and the board asks that you respect this time limitation. Also, please be reminded that no time may be yielded to another speaker. Your acceptance and adherence to, the, to these guidelines will be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Madam Chair, and my directions are concluded. Thank you, Mrs. Donner. And once again, we have a fairly significant number, so these rules will be very strictly enforced, and I will remind everyone to address the chair and the chair only and not make reference to any individual. Um, all right. I'm going to call them in orders of groups of five so that we can line up. To, we have about 21 speakers and so want to make sure we have adequate time for everyone. Okay. So our first speaker is Matthew Peck, who will be followed by Catherine Hugh, Andy Kaysen, Jason Medzuma, and then Richard Long. Go ahead. I wanted to take a moment to thank the school board due to work-life balance. This is the first meeting I could attend. Your kind words in honoring our son Joshua at the April meeting, three days after what would have been his 12th birthday, were nothing short than touching. I will never be able to stop saying how proud I am of him, and while the words of a father may be biased, I think that the community and district has validated that his, he was the epitome of kindness caring to his fellow students and staff. We call Joshua an old soul, being equally at home in an organization meeting or on the playground. He often displayed emotional intelligence greater than individuals 40 or 50 years his senior, and we learned as much from him as he from us. This emotional intelligence is and has always been key. It is his legacy. It's what drives his efforts like the Joshua Kindness Squad and the charity crafted in his honor. And it is critical that we not miscategorize or attack the education of emotional intelligence as anything other than what it is education to ensure our children are better equipped to tackle problems with an approach that is more holistic, mature, honest, and based on critical thinking and factual evidence. As an active duty service member and now a veteran, we've lived in Williamsburg community on and off for the past eight years. My wife has been a teacher here equally the same. We love our community and our schools. As the husband of a teacher, I've had the privilege to be immersed in our educational community, but I am by no means an expert. I wouldn't go to a florist to fix my car, and I wouldn't go to a real estate magnet if I was sick. When it comes to education, our faculty and staff are trained and educated to handle a myriad of situations, and those at the top have gone through decades worth of combined higher learning, conducting research, and having their publications peer reviewed. I am no more equipped to teach algebra than a lawyer is to interpret educational data and discern the complexities of these socioeconomic equities in a school district. Misrepresentations or confusions at higher levels undermines the very structure an educational system is built on. These words are said, the words that are said here matter. They must be coherent and well thought out. They must be factual and true. Thank you, Mr. Peck. If you have a written statement that you want to submit to the clerk, she will send it, the, the full statement to us. Uh, Catherine Hugh. Good evening. I am here on behalf of Jamestown Girls Lacrosse. I am here to ask that school board please consider making it a VHSL sport. I am the mother of two Jamestown Girls Lacrosse players, the mother of a future Jamestown Boys Lacrosse player. My husband coaches the girls, and I am your booster club. But it is, we have girls that are moving on to play at the next level in college and unfortunately, they won't go with a varsity letter. They will go as a club team 
that doesn't garner very much respect. And I would really love to see the fastest growing sport in America represented within our schools here in Jamestown School District. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hugh. Uh, next is Andy Kaysen. Hello, my name is Andy Kaysen, treasurer at WJCEA and a teacher at Jamestown High School. Um, I first wanted to talk about collective bargaining. We are eagerly awaiting any um, decision uh, regarding collective bargaining. Obviously, we would like a joint committee uh, to be formed in order for us to write a collective bargaining resolution together with WJCEA members and board members and any other um, st uh, shareholders, uh, stakeholders um, in this endeavor. Um, it's really important that teachers uh, and WJCC employees have a voice and a seat at the table because the comments at past board meetings have gone a little bit out of control. Um, it was pretty tough to get through the last uh, school board meeting and uh, we had a board member claiming to speak for teachers and grossly misrepresenting a close com uh, community partner of ours, WJCC's, um, the village, claiming that teachers, uh, that the village was calling teachers racist, which was a gross misrepresentation and does not reflect any position of, of from any WJCC teachers or educators that I know of. Um, we want to make it crystal clear, clear that those comments do not represent WJCC educators. And I think I speak for a lot of co colleagues when I say that. I want to thank, Ms., um, I want to thank other board members uh, for saying those comments were divisive, because they were. Uh, I think the person who made those comments, what they were feeling was not righteous anger at defending teachers against so-called, you know, other community organizations calling them racist. I think what that individual was feeling was fear. Fear of what teachers, parents, and community members can do when we stand united and demand the schools that our students deserve. And I think that fear comes from a place where he does not share that vision for our school district. And that's unfortunate. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to keep on working. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Payson. Our next speaker is Jason, Jason Matsuma. Hi, my name is Jason Madzuma. I'm the program manager at, for Lafayette Boys Lacrosse. I'm also interested in lacrosse becoming a VHSL sanctioned sport here in WJCC. And even though I'm representing Lafayette, I'm representing a greater community, I'd like to read this letter coming from a former Jamestown player by Liam Hurley. He's not uh, able to be here. He's in San Diego for training. Uh, Mr. Growing Mr. Mr. Matsuma, I don't know if you can speak on behalf of another member. Oh, I, I meant this was my journey. Growing up as the youngest of five boys in my family, I always looked up to my older brothers who all played lacrosse for Hampton Roads Youth Lacrosse our local recreational league. From a young age, I couldn't wait to follow in their footsteps. When I was in kindergarten, my parents signed me up, even though the league thought I was too young and too small. What they didn't know was that I had been playing lacrosse in my backyard with my brother since I was three years old. During my first practice, I took off with the ball, impressing the coaches enough to let me play at five. Thus, my lacrosse career began. Over the next several years, I played in the Hampton Roads Youth Lacrosse League, just like my brothers. During the summers, I joined the Williamsburg Warriors, a local travel team, to further hone my skills. As I grew older, my passion for lacrosse only intensified. When it was time for high school, I played with a club team that was part of the HR Lax League. We were called the Jamestown Eagles. Although we had no affiliation with Jamestown High School, I cherished playing with my friends and we enjoyed success, particularly our three victories over Lafayette High School. A notable, a notable feat since our football team struggled to win games. By the time I started my sophomore year, I knew I wanted to play lacrosse in college. Out of my brothers, only Brian played in college, participating in club lacrosse at JMU. I am tired. I dreamed of playing Division I lacrosse despite standing only 5'7 and living in Hampton Roads, both factors working against me in the recruitment process. As Ms. Hughes said, there's not much respect for club lacrosse. Thank you, Mr. Dang it, I so much. Uh, Richard Long is next, followed by uh, Eric Buckley. Jamila Walker, John Flanagan, Kaylin Coleman, and James Cast. Good evening. Um, I'm a parent of three WJCC students, uh, one of which is a rising ninth grader at Lafayette High School. Uh, thanks to Jason for telling a story that hits home to me and my family because my son Tyson is on a similar track. 
We're currently exploring independent schools for him to attend because the opportunity to participate at the varsity level in Williamsburg, James City County, and the Bay River District is not an option. We don't want this, and we don't want to leave Williamsburg. Lacrosse is the fastest growing sport in the last 10 years, so much so that the International Olympic Committee has added men's and women's lacrosse to the 2028 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. We have talented student athletes that deserve an opportunity to participate at the varsity level in the VHSL, and it's disappointing that it's not an option. Athletics is the best tool to build self-confidence, dedication, and hard work. Adding men's and women's lacrosse would open up athletic opportunities and participation to WJCC students. As a former Peninsula District swimmer, all-star, all-American, national champion, and Olympic coach, I'm a thriving example of what being affordable of being afforded athletic opportunities can do to open doors and gain collegiate education. Lacrosse can do the same thing for our aspiring WJCC students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Uh, next is Eric Buckley. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Eric Buckley. I'm the head lacrosse coach at Lafayette. Um, I've been a part of the lacrosse community uh, here in, in Williamsburg for roughly 12 years now, um, helped start um, and maintain and hopefully contribute to our youth program. And as these young young kids have grown up, um, followed them into the, the high school ranks. Um, I will tell you, it's, it, it's nothing sh short of amazing how, how talented these kids are. Um, and uh, we have a really, really good product, something that the school and the the school board and the, the community would be very, very proud of. And I'm sure we are, they already are. Um, but we would like, really like to make this an official sport um, to give these kids an opportunity to play at the next level. We have several kids that um, just have not had the opportunity because we're not a recognized sport. So I'd urge you to consider it and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. Our next speaker is Jamila Walker. Good evening, Madam Chair, Dr. Heron, board members. I'm Jamila Walker, a WJCC employee and parent. I appreciate your time and attention as I address a recent concern regarding language used by a board member. It has come to my attention that statements implying societal issues in the black community are responsible for higher suspension rates among students and that black teachers are not as effective were made. It is crucial to acknowledge that such language perpetuates biases and prejudices against black individuals. These divisive and racist remarks have unfortunately been echoed by some community members as well. I believe it is important to challenge and correct such harmful narratives. I would like to extend an invitation to the board member to visit classrooms, including my own, to gain a better understanding of the impactful work being done by black teachers. I am confident that firsthand experience will provide valuable insights beyond existing perceptions. Furthermore, I wanna be very clear that I encourage this board member to review my st um, statistics, particularly the SOL pass, rate, pass rates, which reflect my dedication and effectiveness. These results speak volumes and defy misconceptions about the capabilities of black teachers. Together, we can work towards fostering a more inclusive and supportive educational environment for all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Our next speaker is John Flanagan. Good evening, my name is John Flanagan. I'm here to advocate for lacrosse to be recognized as a high school sport in JCC for boys and girls. I've coached boys and girls across the rec level and the high school level for the past 10 years as Warhill uh, Girls Lacrosse coach for the last eight. Uh, lacrosse is often called the fastest game on two feet, as you've heard. It traces its roots back to Native Americans. It encourages teamwork, communication, is inclusive, offers unique and engaging experience that resonates with young players and fans alike. It has a rich history. It has a physically demanding sport, requires strength and agility, requires mental toughness, strategic thinking, it's a high paced sport, which very little standing around during the game, and it's, uh, uh, it's very fun to watch. Uh, we've had a lot of success in Williamsburg over the last 10 years. We have over 200 youth playing rec lacrosse. We have two teams for our high school and boys and girls lacrosse clubs. We have um, 
Jamestown and Warrior have won set five of the last seven girls' championships with Warrior playing in the last four championship games. Both teams have at least 25 girls on their roster. We've won championships, developed dozens of all-conference players. Several players have earned All-American honors by U.S. Cross. That's the top 1% lacrosse players across the country. It's increasing popularity means more opportunities for scholarships, especially for more colleges and universities, recognizing support in the sport. Aspiring athletes, lacrosse can always be a pathway for both academic and athletic achievement at the collegiate level. We have experience here in Williamsburg over the last 10 years. Many of our players go on to play lacrosse at D1, D2, D3 level, and at least 10 since 2019 playing D1 lacrosse. Two of my daughters are in scholarships and currently play Division I lacrosse. All three played for Warhill. They excelled as All-Americans on the field and all academic Americans in the classroom. Many of our players have graduated as honor students and the top 10% of their class. One was a salutatorian. My daughter Alexis cannot be here tonight because of her work commitment. She graduated with Moore Hill last year as a two-time All-American. Her one regret was that she wished she had the opportunity to play for her school as an official VHSL varsity. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Our next state speaker is Kaylin Coleman. Good evening. My name is Callie Coleman, and I am a recent graduate and former player on Jamestown High School's girls lacrosse team. I played all three years of high school and started much earlier in fourth grade. There's no doubt that lacrosse has played a huge part in shaping me into the young woman I am today, um, and our community needs to be it to be a VHSL-sponsored sport. Through lacrosse, I have made so many great connections, including meeting some of my best friends who are also here in support of this sport, countless mentors, including my incredible coaches who are also here and have have not been compensated for the work and energy that they put into our team, unlike VHSL coaches. Um, most importantly, lacrosse has taught me the fundamentals of discipline, teamwork, patience, perseverance, and self-confidence. Supporting team sports for young girls is vital to, for the development of our community. There's no sh shortage of girls in our school district walking, wanting to play lacrosse as we have record-breaking numbers of membership this year with a team of almost 40 girls. However, with no JV league to compete in because we are not recognized as a VHSL sport, we were forced to be consolidated to one team. Our girls are not getting the proper attention, development, or recognition that they need because we are not an official school sport. Before COVID, our team was HR Lacks champions for three consecutive years, and even after having to rebuild our team after COVID, without the support of the HSL, we were back in the playoffs this year. We have the, we have the membership and the record to warrant the HSL status, arguably more so than some of our school's other sports teams. In the U.S., lacrosse has been the fastest growing sport in the, in the NCAA for over the last two decades. The young girls and student athletes of our community deserve the support that this sport is demanding nationwide. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Coleman. James Cast is next, followed by Jeff White, Kara McLean, Marco Sardi, Susan Hildum, and Molly Robinson. Hi, uh, I'm Jim Casty. I'm the father of two boys in the WJCC school system. My general ask to the school board is to please double down on athletics in general. Uh, in a time where it seems like everything is transitioning to screen-based learning and outdoor time seems to be approaching zero, Please do everything you can to get kids outside in organized physical activities. There's a huge demand for it, and it's a tool to improve mental and physical health. My youngest son tried out for the Tuano basketball team last winter as a seventh grader, along with 55 other boys who tried out for a team with 12 seats. So 43 kids who wanted to play basketball were sent home. On that note, I'm here to specifically um, advocate for JC WJCC to adopt lacrosse as a high school sport. My oldest son is at Warhill and played on the Hampton Roads lacrosse sponsored Rams last spring and he loved every minute of it. My youngest son at Toano is on the Warriors Club lacrosse team and he's moving to high school in two years. Lacrosse is a great sport that teaches invaluable teamwork skills, builds confidence, and helps kids feel part of something bigger than themselves. We're lucky to have an outstanding coaching staff here in this room who voluntarily spent hundreds of hours building an incredible team. If WJCC adopts lacrosse as a high school sport, then this opportunity will be made more broadly available and have a positive impact on a larger number of kids in our community. So my ask to you is to please put more resources towards athletics in general and do everything you can to broaden participation. Adopting lacrosse as a high school sport will have an enormously positive impact on our kids and strengthen our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Casty. Our next speaker is Jeff White. Good evening, and thank you for your time. My name is Jeff White. I've been a lacrosse coach in Williamsburg for 15 years. At every single level, um, girls and boys lacrosse, I've been the volunteer head coach for Jamestown boys or girls for the last 12 years. 
I'd like to echo the sentiments of my community members and encourage the school board to start a discussion about making lacrosse a varsity sport. <clears throat> we're one of the only areas on the East Coast that, it, that is not, and I know we're working with York County to, uh, to move things along in the same uh, direction. <clears throat> I will not uh, repeat the sentiments of my previous community members. They've, they've already taken up most of what I was going to talk about, but I will say I'm the vice president of the, of the HR Lacrosse League, and I have special insight about the transition that Virginia Beach school system went through. Uh, if you have any questions about that, uh, budgeting, uh, things like that, that I, I can help answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. Our next speaker is Kara McLean. Good evening. Um, I'm thankful for the outcome of the vote at last month's um, meeting saying that fourth and fifth grade students will continue to learn the puberty and reproduction sections um, in the family life class separated between boys and girls. And I thank you for your stand to protect the children. Um, the concern arose when I read the May 25th Virginia Gazette article stating whether the recommendation, whether the recommendation was adopted or not, the whole curriculum will be taught that includes puberty instruction for both biological sexes. And then I saw that the May 21 agenda before the meeting said, in both scenarios, the whole curriculum will be taught that includes puberty instruction for both biological sexes. Teaching the same material to boys and girls was not the recommendation to the board on May 7th from the Family Life Committee. It was not the vote on May 25th. Neither the parents nor the public were made clearly aware that this was something that would take place regardless of keeping the children separate or combined. This, there was discussion of a compromise um, on the May 7th work session, but a discussion is not a vote. And even if every board member there uh, thought teaching all the students the same information was a good idea, this was only a recommendation and not, uh, this was not the recommendation brought before you. A statement was made at the work session saying that as, as the standard acquired that boys and girls learn about each other as well as about themselves. Um, and then it was said, that, which is not required, but just delineated, that the standard delineates this. And I asked you yesterday and I asked you again, which standard was it that says that boys and girls must learn about each other as well as about themselves? Um, I read the codes and the guidelines and the policies again and the standards of learning and I could not find that one. So please, I ask you to, to let me know about that and please, um, I ask you to put a, ch a hold on this until you find out this information and don't just accept it. Um, but give yourselves time to look at this further. The school board has the most Thank you, Ms. McLean. Of the whole school system. Our next speaker is Marco Sardi. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Heron. My name is Marco Sardi, and I'm the president of WJCEA. I wanted to speak to you today about collective bargaining. As I understand it, you have had meetings with council, deliberated internally, and taken time to think about the future of our schools. As of today, as far as I'm aware, no progress has been made by the board in creating a resolution committee, which is vital to create the best bargaining framework for our staff and the board's joint efforts. We have seen some places in which a poorly written bargaining resolution resulted in a fracturous process our goal is to create a well-crafted, community-minded bargaining resolution. It is your duty to ensure every diligence is taken during the next 104 days to be informed, communicative, and decisive. This begins with the creation of a bargaining committee to include at least two board members, uh, two or more staff representatives, and plus any other relevant persons that you deem appropriate to making sure this process goes smoothly and efficiently. We need to approve draft language for the WJCC collective bargaining process sooner rather than later to account for any errors that we may need to correct. I know several board members have reservations about bargaining. Fear of the unknown is a powerful thing, but if there is anything teachers are good at, it's educating. Please reach out to us. We are eager to work with you to make sure you have all of the information you need. Do not just speak to counsel. Speak with those whose lives you will change for the better by supporting collective bargaining. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Sardi. Our next speaker is Susan Hilden.
I'm Susan Hildum, representing the York, James City, Williamsburg, and AACP Education Committee. So school board members, Dr. Heron. Um, there was criticism of the village initiative surrounding its recent equity report for the WJCC school district. I believe they are providing a valuable service by compiling the information that they do. We need to look at the statistics to know how different groups of students are doing. If we are not aware of disparities, then we can't fix them. It has been stated that there are many factors that impact a student's academic su success, and I agree. But it is within the realm of public education to provide the fullest opportunity to all students. This is particularly important because the school system is the main chance for disadvantaged students to rise above their circumstances. So I believe we should be thankful for supports and assistance from every source. The Village Initiative is a great resource for our community. <clears throat> they provide tutoring in our school system. They have established a network of neighborhood book boxes. They developed a school curriculum based on our community's black history, a history that is valuable to all students in our community, to name just a few of their contributions. The Village Initiative is clearly making an effort to help disadvantaged students, as are so many of the WJCC teaching staff and administration. I trust that we can move forward cooperatively for all our students. When those among us who are disadvantaged rise, we all rise. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hilton. Our next speaker will be Molly Robinson, followed by Jennifer Howlett, Ellen Par Parham, and Cooper Flanagan. Good evening. My name is Molly Robinson. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Village Initiative. I'm also a PhD candidate at William & Mary, and I graduated from Henrico High School in nearby Henrico County. So tonight I'm here to express my concerns about comments made at the board's last work session, which directly mentioned the Village Initiative and findings from our most recent equity report. In the pursuit of creating safe and equitable learning environments for our students, one aspect of the Village's mission is to interpret publicly available data that measure student performance and track instances of disciplinary actions. We look at data from our school district in relation to data collected by the Virginia Department of Education to situate our findings within a state level context. These data, which our report represents through charts and visuals, lead us to ask questions like, why are white students recommended for gifted services at higher rates than students of color? Why are black students disproportionately punished for, through disciplinary actions like in-school suspensions? Why are SOL pass rates of English learners lower than those of peers for whom English is the first language? None of these questions have simple answers, but the Village's equity report underscores these gaps to advocate for change that will benefit all of our students. It's a bad faith reading to suppose that our equity report seeks to undermine teachers or call any educators racist. Rather than seeing racism as a problem with particular people, our organization focuses on the structural racism that informs student experiences and learning outcomes. To see that minority students are not adequately served by our school system is to acknowledge the enduring and material legacies of educational inequity in Virginia, including histories of segregated schools and political backlash to integration in the form of massive resistance. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jennifer Howlett. Good evening, Madam Chair. Um, I am Jennifer Howlett, and I am a teacher assistant here in the school district. And um, coming off of the last school, school year, I have a request to kind of ask the school board and everybody to make a consideration of a change in a policy that affects TAs in the schools. This is not my forte, so I'm just telling you this right <laughs> off the bat here. Um, teacher assistant's main role is to support learning in the classrooms they are assigned to. On the elementary level, they are running complementary small, small groups that are planned by their teachers. 
TAs are also assisting with students' arrivals into the classroom and at the end of the day to end of the day to dismissal routines with their teachers. Two very stressful times in a class day. Elementary, elementary TAs are also responsible for monitoring the cafeteria during student lunches. During the early part of the pandemic, a policy was changed allowing TAs to be pulled out of their classrooms to sub for teachers that were absent. This was in response to the pandemic loss of our sub pool. Prior to the pandemic, a TA was not allowed to be pulled for more than 45 minutes. During a, the height of, the, of having no subs in our pool, a TA could count on three to four days of not working with their students or their teachers. The ripple effects from the loss of support was felt by everyone. It was easier for teachers to plan on not having support from their TAs. Currently, we are, we, as, we are ended, as we ended this school year, um, the times that TAs were being pulled from their classes had dramatically dropped. It appeared that our sub, sub pool had, is rebounding with better numbers. I would like to ask the board to revisit that policy and to consider changing it back to the pre-pandemic time. Having, a jo having job integrity to the jobs TAs applied for would go a long way to assuming our classroom Thank teachers you. and students. Thank you, Ms. Howland. Our next speaker is Ellen Parm. Uh, Hello, esteemed members of the board, Chairwoman Ortigo and Dr. Heron. My name is Lynn Parm. I'm a social studies teacher at Jamestown and a WJCA member. We, WJCA, have worked very, very hard this year, not just on our collective bargaining campaign, but also being advocates for public education and advocates for collective bargaining local and statewide. As my president mentioned, there are 104 days remaining, so let's get to work. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parm. Our next speaker is Cooper Flanagan, followed by Jackson Dietrich, Preston Makuma, and Desmond Smallwood. Hi, my name is Cooper Flanagan, and um, I like lacrosse game each as a sport. And two of my sisters have played D1 lacrosse in, in college, and if this sport was VHSL, they could have had a higher, like, ranking, maybe. So, please make a the sport. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Our next speaker is Jackson Dietrich. Hello, I'm Jackson Dietrich, and I've been playing lacrosse since fifth grade, and I played for Lafayette's club team, and I'm a rising ninth grader at Boar Hill High School. I would love to play lacrosse as a high school sport um, so that I have a better chance at playing in college. So could you guys please consider making lacrosse a varsity sport? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dietrich. Our next speaker is Preston McZuma. Hi, my name is Preston Matzuma. I'm a rising 11th grader at Lafayette. And one thing I've always noticed at playing with travel teams and at tournaments is People who, uh, or my teammates who are on the uh, club level, don't get recruited as much as people who are at a VHSL level. So I feel like it's very unfair, and it's not. It's a very, it's a huge disadvantage for us compared to other kids. And we have good athletes, and we have good student athletes that can play at the collegiate level. So please make college, or please make this a VHSL sport. Thank you, Mr. Matsuma. And our last speaker is Desmond Smallwood. Maybe, maybe not. Mr. Smallwood, is, is he around? Okay, I think he's not here. That concludes our speakers for today. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Donner. Okay, we will now uh, move on to our consent agenda. It is slightly lengthy, so bear with me as I read through these. Um, we are approving or, um, set item 7.01, approval of financial report and monthly bills and payroll for May 2024. Item 7.02, approval of the minutes from the meeting on May 21st, 24. 
and 7.03 approval of minutes from the special call meeting on May 31st, 24. Item 7.04, approval of minutes from the meeting on June 4th, 24. Item 7.05, approval of revisions to policy DL payroll procedures. Item 7.06, approval of review of policy DM cash in school buildings. Item 7.01, approval of revisions to GBEF slash JHCL lactation support. Item 7.08, approval of revisions to policy JHCL uh, slash GBEF lactation support. Item 7.09, approval of revisions to policy GBEG worker, workers compensation staff protection. Item 7.10, approval of revisions to policy JECA admission of homeless children. Item 7.11, approval of revisions to policy JHCF, student wellness. Item 7.12, approval of revisions to policy JICA, school uniforms. And last but not least, item 7.13, approval of revisions to policy EBCD, school closings. Can I have a motion, please? Oh. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Thank you, Mrs. Henley. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Riffle. Ms. Aller? Mrs. Henley. Aye. Mr. Riffle. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. All right. Uh, now, on to our individual action items. We are looking for a motion to approve personnel actions. Can I? Motion. Madam Chair, I move to approve the personnel actions as presented. Thank you, Mr. Hosang. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Ripple. Ms. Oliver. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. Mr. Ripple. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. Item 8.02, approval of revisions to the 2024-25 Student Code of Conduct. Can I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve the revisions to the 2024-2025 Student Code of Conduct as presented. Thank you, Mr. Riffle. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Henley. Ms. Aller. Mr. Riffle. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. And Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. Item 8.03, approval of the 2024-25 federal program grant applications for Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV. Can I have a motion, please? Madam yeah. Chair, I move to approve the 2024-2025 federal program grant applications for Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV as presented. Thank you, Mrs. Donner. Second. Thank you, Mr. Riffle. And I guess I should ask, is there any discussion, questions? Okay, Ms. Aller. Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. Mr. Ripple. Aye. Ms. Ms. Chen. Aye. And Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. Uh, approval 8.04, I mean item 8.04, approval of the WJCC literacy plan. Can I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve the WJCC literacy plan as presented. Thank you, Mr. Riffle. Is there Se a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hosang. Any discussion? Okay, Ms. Aller? Mr. Riffle. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. And Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. Item 8.05, approval of the invitation for bid number 2024714, cafeteria expansion at Jamestown High School. Can I please have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve the award of contract for invitation for bid number 2024714, cafeteria expansion at Jamestown High School, the Oyster Point construction in the amount of $3,050,000. Thank you, Mrs. Donner. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hosang. Any discussion or questions? Ms. Aller? Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. Mr. Griffle. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. And Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. 8.06, approval of purchase request for parking lot improvements 
to TMG Construction under contract number 202-40155B. Can I have a motion? Um, Madam Chair, I move to approve the purchase request for parking lots improving or improvements to TMG Construction Corporation under the annual contract number 202-30155B at Clareburg Baker Elementary School, Jameson High School, Lafayette High School, Lower Lane Elementary School, Norwich Elementary School, School Board Central Office, Stonehouse Elementary, and Warhol High School in the amount of $280,131.68. Thank you, Mr. Ruffle. Can I just clarify um, the contract number? We ha This is a slightly different contract oh, um, number in the apologies. motion. It's not actually, it is actually printed the way you read it. But in the um, subject line, there's a 401, and this says 301. Can we just get clarification on the contract number? Do we know? Mr. Snipes, do you have any information on the contract number? Or Ms. Alar? We're looking it up. Just, just one moment. Again, so I'm happy to read it all over again. Should we come back to this item? Or can can probably shuffle we'll around. Wait, we'll just wait a minute. Do you want to you can come back? And do that order. Move to the table. Ma Madam Chair, if you look at one of the contracts under the item number, it looks like it's contract number 20240155 Bravo. Okay, thank you. Can we just read the motion with the correct contract number? So is it the top one or the bottom? The top line has the correct contract number. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to approve the purchase request for parking lot improvements to TMG Construction Corporation under the annual contract number 202-4011, sorry, 155B at Clareburg Baker Elementary School, Jameson High School, Lafayette High School, Laurel Lane Elementary School, Norwich Elementary School, School Board Central Office, Stonehouse Elementary School, and Warhol High School at the amount of $200,131.68. Thank you, Mr. Riffle. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Henley. Ms. Aller? Mr. Ma Riffle. Sorry. I'm sorry, is, was there a discussion? Was there a clarification for, like, we, I think we talked about other facilities in the last meeting, and then we saw an email to us that was agenda item I yeah, Mr. Snipes, if you would speak to the change in the agenda item, I did present it my notes to the board, but just publicly be let uh, everyone know with the change and why. Uh, yes, board members, we changed and removed the largest amount for four hundred thousand dollars, so that we could go out to uh, and information for bid for that item. Okay, Mr. Snipes. So I believe the the amount of money. In the uh, provided this year didn't cover all of the parking lots that we had on the first agenda item, and therefore we had to uh, move one another agenda item for the rest of the parking lots to July, when the three hundred thousand would become available in the next CIP that was just approved. Okay. So it was a lack of money to fund everything under the first agenda item. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Thank you, Mr. Riffle. Of course. Any other uh, comments or questions on this item? Okay, now Ms. Eller. Mr. Ripple. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. Item 8.07, approval of purchase request to Everdriven Technologies. Can I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve the purchase request to Everdriven Technologies under the cooperative contract number R190401 with Omnia Partners for a total amount not to exceed $1,200,000. Thank you, Mrs. Hunley. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hosang. Any questions or discussion on this? Okay, Ms. Oliver. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. Mr. Riffle. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mr. Hosang. Aye. 
Mrs. Ortigo. Hi. Item 8.08, .08, approval of purchase request for playground upgrades at Clara Bird, DJ Montague, James River. Uh, can I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve the purchase request for playground upgrades under PCA contract number zero, sorry, OD31520 at Clara Bird Baker, DJ Montague, and James River Elementary Schools to Bliss Products in the amount of $163,000. $693.12. Thank you, Mrs. Donner. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Henley. Any discussion or questions? Okay, go ahead, Ms. Elmer. Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. Mr. Griffel. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. And Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. Item 8.09, approval of authorization for VHSL membership for the 24-25 school year. Can I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve authorization for VHSL memberships for Jamestown, Lafayette, and Roar Hill High Schools for the 2024-2025 school year as presented. Thank you, Mrs. Henley. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hosang. Any discussion? Okay. Ms. Oller. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. Mr. Riffle. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. And last but not least, uh, item 8.10, approval of appointment of the VSBA voting delegate and alternate delegate. Can I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve the appointment of the chair and vice chair to serve as VSBA voting delegate and alternate delegate at the VSBA Delegate Assembly in November 2024. Thank you, Mr. Hosang. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Riffle. Any discussion? Now's your chance to be the delegate. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Ms. Aller. Mr. Hosang. Aye. Mrs. Hunley. Aye. Mr. Riffle. Aye. Ms. Chen. Aye. Mrs. Donner. Aye. Mrs. Ortigo. Aye. All right, we will now move on to some informational presentations and we will hear from the Career Ready Advisory Committee, uh, their annual report. Ooh. Good evening, Madam Chair, Dr. Heron, and members of the board. It is my pleasure to present to you tonight a summary of the Career Ready Advisory Committee annual report for the 2023-2024 school year. Here to share with me tonight is Sherry Thrift, WJCC's career coach, Melissa Che, WJCC coordinator of CTE, and Ms. Susan Bow, Career Ready Advisory Committee chair. <clears throat> we present this information to you on behalf of the 22 committee members, some of whom are here tonight. The committee members, comprised of community representatives from a wide range of industries, parents, students, and WJCC teachers and staff, are excited about all the work that has been completed this year. This work is key to the continued growth of our CTE programming and experiences and opportunities that expand our students' college and career readiness. Many of the highlights found in the annual report were also shared during the Goal 1 presentation at the last board meeting. Highlights such as the annual mock interview event and the class of 2024 senior hiring event. As an update to what was shared at the last board meeting related to the senior hiring event, as of today, six students have secured full-time employment with many of the others still in process. <clears throat> Within the annual report, you will find a list of accomplishments earned by CTE students and staff this year. WJCC and the advisory committee are proud of all the students and staff and recognize the hard work that took place to earn these recognitions. A few highlights to share include at the FBLA state conference competition, three Lafayette students and one Jamestown student qualified to compete in the FBLA national leadership conference in Orlando. War Hills NASA Hunch Club had three teams compete at the critical design review at NASA Langley and Hampton one of those projects was selected to attend the finals at NASA Johnson, Johnson Space Center in Houston. The success of these students is exciting and is a reflection of their hard work and the leadership of their career and technical student organization, 
or CTSO, advisors. As shared in the annual report, the advisory committee recommends providing stipends to CTSO advisors in support of the hard work and time they spend with students outside of the school day. The advisory committee has also been excited to see the growth of the middle school CTE program with the addition of six new CTE courses for seventh and eighth grade students, which were very successful in their first year this school year. <clears throat> Throughout the year, the advisory committee has held thorough discussions related to how we can continue to grow in our CTE programming and partnerships within our community. These conversations have helped further develop and enhance existing opportunities and have also led to planning for future programmatic growth. As shared in the report, the advisory committee recommends WJCC continue to expand their network of local employers to further build career partnerships and opportunities for students to explore expanding enrollment opportunities for interested students in trade trades-based courses. A full list of key activities, accomplishments, and recommendations <clears throat> excuse me, are available to you through the annual report, and we thank you for allowing us the time to share these highlights with you tonight. We are happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Ms. Walters. Are there any questions or comments from board members? Yes, Mr. Riffle. I want to say thank you all for compiling this very long list of things you all do. This is pretty amazing. I think it's something I'd like to, or most of our community to look at as something that we, yeah, I think we stated this in our last meeting or in the work session, that we don't have like large partnerships like an academy or things like that that our schools use to do these type of things. We do it through what we have available to us. So this is a, this is a applaud. Thank you all for your work and the people below you were doing the daily work for this and the members of the committee. I, I met most of them or some of them call me for what I do in my day job, so it's Marshall's here. So um, he's a very loud advocate and I'm, I'm just very proud of the work that we do in our division for this, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Riffle. Any other comments, Mrs. Donner? Um, I would just say I, I loved sitting on, this was my first committee that I sat on as a board member and I think just highlighting all of the things that we bring forward for our students and really giving them a robust set of options about what they can do and supporting them you know, during the school day and after school to just engage and, and learn about there's so much out there. So just thank you for all that you're doing and the creativity that you are to finding partners um, out in the community. And just to our community members that watch, there's so much that you can do to really plug into the schools and really, if you're excited about the work that you do, um, and want to share that with students like there are definitely ways that you can connect with WJCC to do that in this team so thank you. Mrs. Hunley? And I also want to say um, just coming off of graduating the gra watching the graduates and hearing their stories and the wonderful things they're doing and how amazing they are I know behind every student are teachers in programs like this and I know that we applauded our students but tonight I would like to applaud you all for your work as well because I don't think we often get the applause. <laughs> Thank you. You're done? Thank you, Mrs. Hunley. Any more notes? Okay. But, Sorry, I should have included my opening comments. Um, I, I think it's something I, our, our community could do more is maybe surveying through the chambers of commerce or in our business, and I'd like to see our, our board maybe take this up in the future, um, doing some type of survey to enact maybe maybe provide a communication channel to allow those things to happen. I, know, I don't know if it does happen. Maybe it does. I don't know. I'm new to the board. But I'm learning a lot that this is something that we continually keep asking, but we don't really hear a large response back. So I'd, I'd like to see how we can better use it, um, our resources so we're not wasting and screaming into the void of please help us and then we're not. So, so thank you all. I know it's really hard work and it's, it's not easy to, to make partnerships that are free essentially to showcase job opportunities and, and skills in the future. So thank you again. And I just echo the sentiments that we just heard. I commend you all for your tremendous work and for um, everything that's gone into growing this in just a, really a short amount of time. I think I said that last time. So I know that takes a lot of strategic planning and foresight and, and finding partners and working with partners and developing programs. And I think that our students are lucky to see demonstrated um, and have opportunities to realize that there are many, many pathways to success. There's not just one pathway. Um, college is a wonderful option, um, and, but there are many, many others, and so um, our students are lucky. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. 
Um, item 9.02, we will now hear from the, uh, the annual report from the Student Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Heron. I am pleased to present the 2023-2024 report for the Student Advisory Committee. The Student Advisory Committee serves to encourage student voice, share information, and make recommendations to the school board about the division and its governance. The committee is composed of the superintendent and or designees, two school board members, and 12 students, four from each respective high school, Lafayette, Warhill, and Jamestown. The Student Advisory Committee held four scheduled meetings during the school year. During the first meeting, the committee members participated in a brainstorming activity that served to establish the year's focus areas. These focus areas were to, one, foster a positive learning environment in our schools, two, improve student attendance rates, three, integrate diverse learning mediums, and four, gather and act on student feedback. Each meeting throughout the year included discussion and brainstorming each area to include cultivating a supportive and inclusive atmosphere that encourages active participation and collaboration among students, developing targeted initiatives to address factors contributing to absenteeism, and establishing regular channels for students to express their opinions on the learning process, curriculum, and overall educational experience. During our final meeting, committee summarized the year's collective work and after a collaborative activity, introduced a new focus area for the 2024-2025 school year. Students determined that valuing the collective student voice should be a primary focus for the new school year. Mrs. Chen and Mr. Riffle thanked the committee members for using their voices to improve the educational experience of the of WJCC students. This, this concludes my committee report, and I welcome any questions that you may have. Thank you, Ms. Monpoint. You're welcome. Any questions or comments? I don't have a question, but a comment. I was on the committee, and, and I shared the love by coming off, so Mr. Riffle and Ms. Chin can come on, but Ms. Mompoit, I enjoyed working with you and Dr. Worley. The icebreaker things that you all came up with to help kids just really focus on, on what's important was amazing. I missed that, and um, I think you deserve a round of applause as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sure. Thank you, Ms. Unley, for yielding your time to me and Ms. <laughs> Chen. Um, I, I find it very valuable to be a, a very young member of the board and, and the community and to, to see our young people um, outside of the classroom in this type of regard. And I, I think it's something our board actually could use more of in, in, in a way that's adjusted. And I, I think we spoke of this in our last meeting of potentially seeing a student um, join our board um, and sit here to give an opinion. I'm not a voting member, of course, but um, I think it's something I'd like to explore in the committee. I think Ms. Chen shares that with me. and. Um, other members of the board too. I, other divisions have this resource and it's, it's available to us by the code sections of Virginia. So, um, and I, I know our students have great voices and they share a lot of their raw experiences with us and not all of them makes into reports and into icebreakers. And, but it's, it's a great time and it's something that I think will be very valuable to us. So I just want to thank you and thank you Dr. Worley for your time and, and energy in those meetings. It's Sometimes it's a little draining after the day of school and then to get them to interact with us as, as adults, right? It's like us scary people in suits sometimes. and. It's been fun. So I think we've kind of broken them out of their shells. Hopefully we get people to apply for the opening positions and we look forward to having another great time next year. So thank you again. Thank you, thank you Mr. Riffle. Any other comments? Ms. Chen, did you want to say anything? Nope. No, I, I will. Can you hear me okay? You can, I, yeah. I can't really hear of Mr. Riffle. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't really hear what he said. But I will say that um, serving um, on the Student Advisory Committee has been a lot of fun. Um, I appreciate um, Dr. Worley and Mrs. Montpoint for their um, creative leadership. And um, most importantly, um, I want to say a big thank you and most grateful to all the students who showed up. Um, and we have some of the most amazing um, high school students. So I'm really looking forward to continuing to serve on this committee. Thank you, Ms. Chen. And um, I, I would also just like to commend you all for your hard work. The, the voices of our students are incredibly important. After all, that's, they're the reason that we're doing any of this. Um, so their experience is, um, is very important to us, and we can't really understand their experience other than to hear from them. And, and so we thank all the students who, um, who 
offered their time and, and volunteered to be on this committee. It's, it's an extra commitment. It's after school. It's when you want to go home, and they, they stayed and, and uh, were the voice for their um, respective classes at their respective schools. And so we commend them, and thank you to your team and all that went into um, facilitating that for them. Thank you. All right. Last but not least, item 9.03, an annual report from our Special Education Advisory Committee. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Heron. Tonight, I'm happy to introduce Tori Otzat, SEAC Chair, and Caroline Tripp, SEAC Co-Chair. They will provide a synopsis tonight of the SEAC annual report. They have dedicated their time not only to the eight SEAC meetings this school year, but also in support of our Parent University Day and Disability Awareness event in March. I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Richard Bowmaster, WJCC Parent Resource Coordinator, for his support and leadership with SEAC. Finally, I'd like to thank our SEAC members for their support. And you may notice that they, we have some custom t-shirts that were designed by SEAC committee member, uh, Cora Smith, now graduated senior from Warhol High School. If you're wondering, they're not for sale. However, they were designed to represent the positive progress and support of our schools, uh, special education parents, and most importantly, our students. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Good evening. Um, as Dr. Brown said, my name is Tori Atza, and I've served this year as the chair of the Special Education Advisory Committee, and... I'm Caroline Tripp, and I have served as the principal. We're here today to present our annual report. First, I'd like to read our statement of purpose as one of our main goals is to increase awareness of the committee's work. The role of the SEAC is to advise the local school division regarding the education of children with disabilities, participate in the development of priorities and strategies for meeting the identified needs of children with disabilities, submit periodic reports and recommendations regarding the education of children with disabilities to the division superintendent for transmission to the local school board assist the local school division in conveying plans to the community for meeting the needs of children with disabilities for educational services, review the policies and procedures for the development and delivery of special education and related services prior to the submission to the local school board, and participate in the review of the local school division's annual plan. On behalf of the committee, I would like to thank and acknowledge the school board for addressing SEAC's recommendations from last year. I would also like to thank Ms. Chen specifically for her attendance and participation in our meetings, for sharing important information with the committee regarding the school board's work, and for sharing our work with the board. I would like to thank Dr. Heron for supporting our ongoing efforts on behalf of our special education students, and I would also like to thank Dr. Adam Brown, Dr. Richard Bowmaster, Margaret Matthews, and the special education department for their leadership and support of the committee. As I mentioned earlier, one of our main goals is to increase awareness of CX work and to increase participation on the committee. Thanks to our efforts to get out into the community, including sending representatives to seven schools for their open house events, participating in the Parks and Recreation Trick or Treat for Disability Awareness event, helping to plan a Disability Awareness History and Inclusion Month event, and hosting a session on CX at the University Day hosted by the Division's Special Education Parent Resource Center, we continue to see citizens attend SEAC meetings monthly with an average of three citizens attending each meeting. We also had a quorum at all but one meeting. In just two short years, the committee has made great strides in growing the committee and increasing its visibility amongst families and throughout the community. We request continued assistance with maintaining and increasing awareness of our committee and the work that we do, especially supporting the sharing of our committee brochure to help families connect with us. Another goal which the committee is passionate about is connecting families with more information about available community resources. Long-term member Beth Hall helped us move forward with this goal this year by connecting us to local organizations that sent representatives to our meetings to speak. We were able to hear from five different organizations throughout the year who spoke to us about programs for advocacy and training for parents and families of special education students, mental health support, inclusive communities, and therapeutic and recreational services and program offerings for young people with a range of disabilities. A recommendation the committee has for the school board for the coming school year is to continue to place a priority on providing support and funding for the recommendations developed as a result of the district's inclusive audit, including increased opportunities for family engagement. We believe it is vital that families are connected not only to resources available through the school division, but also in the community and throughout the state. I would like to highlight some other work of the committee throughout the past year. 
Before I do so, I want to share that the committee is comprised of individuals who are passionate about the work that they do. I do not know that you would find a more knowledgeable, curious, creative, determined group of people than those I have had the pleasure to serve with over the last year. Their daily lives are impacted by the services provided to their children through our schools, and they advocate for families who are disconnected from necessary information, struggling to access resources, striving to have their children's needs met, and looking for support as they navigate a system that can be very confusing. Thanks to their passion and determination, this year we updated our grading policy considerations, which we are looking forward to sharing with the board when the grading policy is dis discussed. We worked with the YMCA to provide a pilot project for two self-contained classes to participate in the YMCA Safety Around Water program with students from Stonehouse and Norwich Elementary Schools attending a week of classes consisting of four 45-minute lessons. We supported the application of the Parent Resource Center for a subgrant through the VDOE for Bright Beginnings administrators to plan for a parent-to-parent -parent mentoring program Focus on families new to the Early Childhood Special Education Program, and we co-sponsored a four-part series for families and rising sixth graders to learn more about social skills, self-advocacy, healthy living and eating, and academic behaviors for success. In the coming year, the committee looks forward to support from the school board as they explore the development of a robust district-wide peer mentoring program. We are also excited about continuing to grow our Disability Awareness Month event impact and increase opportunities to raise awareness of disabilities and of the division's special education programs throughout the year. We respectfully submit our goals and recommendations to the board, and thank you again for your continued support of our special education students. Thank you, Ms. Outset and Ms. Tripp. Um, are there any questions or comments from the board? I don't have a comment, but I was also <laughs> served. <laughs> and went kicking and no, I didn't go kicking and screaming, but thank you for all you do. I hope that you will continue to get a student on, because I know Cora is graduating, so hopefully you'll keep that tradition going. And just like Oprah would say, you get a round of applause too. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Any other comments from board members? I, I'm just reading this report and it just, it's, it's just remarkable how thorough and how much this committee has done over the course of the year. And just I really appreciate the substantive recommendations, um, how they tie into the goals of the overall division. And just I know that this is something that's in addition to people's work after work when they're away from families. I know that takes away a lot from um, from people to be able to do that. It's just such important work. So thank you so much for leaning in here um, and just helping guide us as a school board around to make sure that we're supporting all of our students, especially our special needs students. Thank you, Mrs. Donner. Any other comments? Well, I too commend you for, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Chen, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> nope, I forgot to ask you. Um, I, I'll just be brief, just um, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to our board representative on SEAC, and I look forward to my continued um, service and participation and on this particular uh, committee. Um, I uh, just wanted to say that just echoing what my colleagues have already said, um, it is remarkable um, the advocacy and the education, and, and I'll just point out the, the sense of community and engagement. Um, this committee uh, is able to not just connect families and provide support for families and students and to bring awareness to us as board members, um, but also I've enjoyed all of the speakers um, that have come to our meetings. Um, it really just has been very educational and eye-opening, um, and so I look forward to working with all of us as a board, um, looking being aware of the committee's goals, but also looking very carefully at the recommendations that are in this report. Um, there are four big ones, but really trying to dig deep and seeing how we as a board can can really kind of make sure that, that those recommendations um, take life. Thank you, Ms. Chen, and thank you for speaking up. I'm sorry I moved past the screen too quickly. Um, I, too, commend you. Thank you for the tremendous amount of work just listening to everything you, you read from your list of what you've accomplished in one year. 
is exhausting just to hear, so I can't imagine actually <laughs> doing it. Um, you're obviously serving as a, as a bridge um, between our school community and some of our most vulnerable students and families who, who need the support. So it's tremendous work you're doing, and we thank you for it. We are coming to the end here. We're going to move on to board member comments, and I'm just going to say very briefly um, before we open it up to all to all board members, I'm not addressing anyone in particular, um, but that we just remember that our words that we speak from from this stage and these tables that they that they do matter and they impact people, and not just the words, but um, but our tone and our tenor and how we say things and how we do things is as important as what we say and what we do. And we um, are setting an example for our community and we are setting the tone for the organization that we lead. And so um, while of course we want free and, and open expression and freedom to um, express opinions and opinions that, that are different from, from each other sometimes. Um, I just want to remind everyone that this is not a place to have um, personal arguments or vendettas or um, so with that I will just um, turn it over to Mr. Ripple. Thank you Madam Chair and thank you for um, that disclaimer and reminding us why we're here. Um, well, happy primary day for everyone out in the audience and at home watching in anticipation of whatever your results you'd like to see. Um, I'd also want to thank the advocates that came out today and the students who um, we recognize. That uh, I'm appreciative of your efforts in the community in, in all aspects. Um, from the reports we saw today, you can see our division's up to a lot of things, and these are just the things that are not outside of instruction in some ways and inside of others and it's important for us to recognize our division does a lot for our community in ways that are not always seen here in this weird room um, and I think that's important to highlight as a board member um, often and, and more than we even talk about you know, budget items and getting the item number right right these are just how the board works and um, so a big, I'm a big believer in maybe kind of showcasing how the sausage is made um, and understanding how access and understanding works in government. Um, so many of the advocates who brought forth lacrosse or if you're in school, you know, collective bargaining, it's important for you to understand how maybe that was, things get on the agenda. Um, it takes four board members for that to happen. Um, it's it we're a team sport up here, like almost all branches of government across the nation. Um, you can't do this alone. This is something you have to do, you know, gather. I have to gather my colleagues and say, we gotta rally around this and, and, and do it or you know, we, we talk about it, it involves funding, it has to be studied, it has to have time. Um, and that's the thing I'd express for the lacrosse team. Um, we've talked about it with the superintendent and we've talked about it in the, the brief discussion we had last meeting. Um, it is expensive to bring on new student like sports and, and, and I'm, I'm not gonna amend a current budget item or current action item to see that happen without really you know, consulting our staff who are experts in this and, and that's I know it's disappointing to an aspect, but it's just how to do good governance properly. Why would you do something and then take it away? And then, I don't know, I wouldn't fully marry when they took away sports teams, and that was just kind of a, a terrible time. So I don't think that's something worth pursuing here. Um, uh, not the team itself, just that action of let's do this and then let's not, let's do this, right? It's, it's just not a way to play with your community at all. Um, but yeah, that's. I have to say, um, I also would like to say it's important for you to c continue to advocate for what you believe in. Um, I, I have sat on both sides of this as a staffer and on the board, and this is, I'd say, our six-month little, you know, check-in, I guess, like our first year. So first, I want to say thanks to the chair for her, her leadership through the year. It's been, um, it's been great serving with you all, and it's been not like I'm leaving or anything. It's just, I just want to recognize it's hard to do this job, and I think, you know, it's been a different year than anyone's really expected with. Um, the Virginia Literacy Act coming in and all the presentations that are pretty long. It's a, it's a strategic planning year as well, so we're going on a retreat pretty soon where we have to talk about the goals for the future of our division. So it's not easy to sit at the helm and it's not easy to be a vice chair. It's not easy to be a parliamentarian or a board member at this time across the United States and even here in our division. So um, I'm only mentioning that because we went to graduation. Um, this 
past Friday, and it was just an amazing experience. Like I recently graduated. Um, no, no hate to anyone on the board. Probably sooner than most of them have, or recently, right? It's just, if there's a level of that was kind of fun for me to go back and see smiling faces and cheering parents and people were just excited for the day. You know, people were shouting over the pledge of allegiance, you know, just to say their kid's name. I don't know what that really brings, but it was a cool ambiance to be a part of, and it was cool to sit on the stage with all of my colleagues at one point um, and to just hear from our students about their their years, um, whether they're difficult through COVID, to themselves as seniors. It, there are stories that, that matter to me. I'm a big believer in storytelling and hearing it from the people who are on the ground, whether you're a teacher or a student. But that day was about students. It was about hearing from them um, and their lived experiences in our division. So I'm, I'm just proud of the division we, we serve. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm thank you. thankful for the voters who got me here. And I'm, I'm, I'm reflective on the time and um, just because of the events on Friday. Um, so. Um, if I had to give a vote to which speech was the best from the principals, uh, it was Mr. Rice, um, <laughs> hands down. Apologies for, I know Jamestown's in my district, um, but it's just, I just want them to aspire to do better all the time, right? It's, it's always, I'm just kidding. Um, but it was, it was a great speech. I think it, it left me with something to think about. Um, there's a lot going on in the future of graduations. And, and typically when you hear an adult speak at graduation, you're like, this guy, you know, I don't want to hear from him. But it was good. And not saying the other ones were bad. I just had to pick a favorite, you know. Um, Yes, that's all my time. I appreciated our time together um, as a board that day. We did some fun things and had too many meals and you know drank too much coffee um, and got to hear Dr. Kiever and I won't I won't mention these aren't for the viewing public maybe but it was fun to play our games and, and to to sit around and, and hear more about each other and, and that's something that's not really often done um, in public office or in the public eye so I, I'm, I'm thankful for that um, and thank you. All of them for, for being here. So, and congratulations, graduates of 2024. So. Thank you, Mr. Riffle. Ms. Chen, can I come to you next? If you have any concluding remarks. Uh, yes, um, I do have a few remarks. Um, just wanted to say that since we last met, uh, many of us participated in the exceptional games, and they were truly exceptional and that's such a fun day and, and really representative of the inclusivity um, and diversity and support that is our community and is WJCC. Um, so I would encourage anybody um, who has a chance next year to join us at the Exceptional Games. Um, and just wanted to say congratulations to all of our graduates. Um, our high, uh, Friday was an incredible celebration, all of us um, celebrating everything that you've accomplished. Um, also was a privilege to participate in the GED graduation. Um, and, um, and we also got to see some preschoolers graduate and we look forward to welcoming them um, into our kindergarten classes. So lots of, lots of graduations, lots of celebrations, um, lots of proud moments. Um, so we congratulate um, all, all of these students and their success. Um, and I wanted to wish everybody a safe and restorative, relaxing summer break. Um, and to thank everybody for your support of the board, um, despite some of our sort of ups and downs. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say is um, that I am very grateful to the advisory committees um, all of them, um, and then especially the ones that came to give their annual report today, um, really do rely on our students and um, these committees uh, to to give us their recommendations, their expertise, their personal experience, their professional experience, um, in order for us to, to lead and govern. Um, and then lastly, uh, just wanted to say also that um, we do appreciate our community advocacy groups, such as the Village, NAACP, WJCEA, um, just, as, just as we do our, our advisory committees. Um, these, these community advocacy groups are, are integral to um, providing us with data and, and important education. Um, and, and so that information is, is useful, and, and we do take those into consideration, and we do respect those groups um, and appreciate all that you do. Uh, lastly, uh, grateful to Mrs. Uh, to Ms. Aller and the tech folks for looping me in tonight. Um, I, I hope that um, it wasn't too much trouble, and um, I 
I'm glad that I could join you all virtually. Thank you, Ms. Chen. We're glad you joined us as well. Um, Mr. Hosein, can I continue with you? Yes. Um, I want to congratulate all of our graduates also. Um, we had a great day on Friday uh, experiencing um, the transition of the students from high school, from basically childhood, quote unquote, to adulthood. And I wish them a luck uh, with whatever their, um, their future endeavors hold. I also want to congratulate our GED graduates that we um, participated in the ceremony with. Uh, and having a basically a career and then going on and getting your GED, that's not a simple, easy thing. So uh, my hat's off to all of them. Um, and finally, I just want to thank our school administration and our school staffs for the graduation ceremonies on Friday. Um, that is a lot of work to go into, and at least to me, it went off without a hitch. I'm assuming most of the uh, parents and students thought the same thing, so uh, I just want to say congratulations and great job for that. Thank you, Mr. Hosang, and congratulations to your daughter. She was one of our graduates this year. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Hundley? Yes, I'd like to echo um, the excitement of seeing the students walk across for their GED graduations um, and you know, to just be determined to press on. The exceptional games was so much fun. Um, I know Ms. Chen and uh, Mr. Riffle and I had a hula hoop. Um, I hadn't used a hula hoop in I don't know how long. I think we laughed more. That's why we couldn't keep it up. But I think sometimes we just have to step into children's shoes and put some of our adult cares away and just have the life of a child. Head start, those little girls in those little dresses and boys in their little bow ties. Um, moving up to kindergarten and then elementary and middle school students had their moving up ceremonies and they're so proud because they have gone through a lot from the pandemic and most of them, every one of them said, we made it. So that was exciting. Um, the graduation honor projects, I know, I don't know about y'all, I was sitting there and as they were going over some of them, I didn't even know what they were talking about. I was like, wow, that seems very impressive. But a lot of it went over my head and I was just like 14 students had these great, amazing projects. And um, it just made me feel so proud. And one of them was one of my kindergarten babies. So um, that just brings me joy when I see them. So the lacrosse, they had a secret weapon. Another one of my students came up asking for lacrosse. So um, I'm glad, uh, I know I had got a lot of emails, so I was very happy to see that I think it was like nine or 10 or 11 people came forward to, to speak, so we definitely heard you. Um, Juneteenth events are going on tomorrow in Colonial Williamsburg, I guess the city, well, the city area. Um, uh, I am happy to see, this is the first time we've had a record, I think, of this many people staying. I know there's an illustrious sea of red out there, community members, and um, I think it's very important for the community to come and see what we do because um, I don't always think um, that we pull them in enough and or explain to them how we need their help. I have seen um, the Deltas uh, organize and helping in the school systems as well as other fraternities and sororities, and I would like to say we, we need you more. The community does need you. There are other things that we can um, also have your support with because support is very ha um, helpful. We cannot do this alone. Um, summer, we do need to take time to relax, rest, rejuvenate, because I remember it, summer's going to go really fast, and we're going to be sitting back here ready to start all over. Um, mental health, please take time for self-care. Um, I sometimes get a little frustrated when I hear people talk about social-emotional learning. It's not needed. It's it's just a new buzz thing, and and it is that till it knocks on your door. So I pray that never happens to anyone in here that has to deal with um, a child or, or a, a loved one or a spouse that is going through mental health issues. Um, I do feel the need. We've had a few losses with our students this summer. And I would like to just, if I could, ask for a moment of silence for those children and families that um, are having to deal with that at this time. If, if you all would just could just take a moment of silence, please. Sure. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Henry. That was nice. Mrs. Donner? Sure. Um, well, I'm going to back up a little bit before our graduations and talk about my, one of my favorite topics, which is field day. Um, I had the opportunity to go to the one at Matthew Whaley, and just our physical education teachers are phenomenal. The creativity that they have to get this children moving um, is just, it's great. And I said this at our last meeting, and I'm just you know, reiterating it. When you see these children who are just, excited to be able to have the freedom to run around with their friends, they're with their buddy, they're holding hands, they're negotiating which activity do we do in which order, just the skills that they're building and then just, the, and they're learning while playing and they don't even and know that. And just watching them do the hula hoops, one of them I timed, she was hula hooping for like five minutes, it was amazing. <laughs> um, and the tug of war was, uh, it was funny watching 30 kids trying to pull each other <laughs> across the line. Um, and then the parachute was like a huge favorite where everyone gets underneath the parachute and um, it's just the laughter and the giggles. And that's exactly what our schools are about. I think for me as a board member, going to those events reminds me that so much is going right in our school system. And yes, there are things that we have to fix, but I think if we can go back and remind ourselves what it's like to be a child before the adult stuff creeps in and different views of people and things that you're taught and all you really care about is like, are you my size? Do you treat me nicely? And are we having fun together? And like, if we could as adults go back to that stage, I think so much in this world would be a lot better. Um, I echo around graduation. Uh, it, I will have to say Mr. Rice was the MVP on the speech. It was so memorable. And especially, you know, for your, he was talking about, you may not remember what your high school principal said, but I mean, he, he did a Ric Flair impersonation. So I think just the creativity from our administrators and the time and effort that they put in to send their kids off um, and, and just working to make sure I would, when I was, all the principals were amazing, but you know, standing next to Mr. Rice and listening to him say something to each child, encouraging them, you could tell where there were some where it was like, you know, he said, buddy, you did it, you made it. And so these kids knowing that someone has been there supporting them and has been rooting for them this whole time, and now they've made it across that stage was phenomenal. Um, and then just lastly, I'd like to say again, thank you to our teachers and staff. Um, this is a well-deserved break. I know it was a hard run to the finish line to finish all of the testing to make sure to pack up your classrooms, to make sure all of your kids had what they needed um, as they went off into the summer. And so we appreciate all that you do and we really um, hope that you get to rest and restore uh, so we, as we head into the summer and looking forward to a great school year. That concludes my comment. Thank you, Mrs. Donner. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to go last because everything gets said. <laughs> but. Um, May and June were exceptionally busy but wonderful months because it's, we get to go to a lot of um, celebratory events and um, really the culmination of, of a whole year or maybe multiple years of, of work and we get to celebrate alongside the t uh, students and the teachers who are just so proud of, of themselves with their students and they're so proud of their students. Um, th this was my first year going to the exceptional games and it, it was phenomenal and I'm already looking forward to next year. It was um, it's just so wonderful how everyone lines the sidewalk and welcomes each busload of, of kids. The kids are so excited. Um, they, You can just tell that they are feeling special in that moment and celebrated and seen and that's wonderful. Um, I did leave before the hula hoop <laughs> situation, which I'm actually happy about, but <laughs> um, I would not have lasted very long. Um, but that is, that is a phenomenal event, and um, kudos to all who conceptualized of that event and who put it together and, and execute it. Um, and I hope it, it can grow and, and remain wonderful. Um, of course, congratulations to all the graduates from, from preschoolers to our high school graduates. Um, it's already been said, graduation day was just really a lot of fun, um, and I've can't, um, I just can't express how amazing it is to hear um, 
the number of scholarships, the number of awards, the number of um, various accolades, honors projects, music accomplishments, choirs, bands, orchestras. Um, it's just a full display um, of everything that many, many individuals put in blood, sweat, and tears throughout each day of the school year and to be able to celebrate a graduation um, like that and, and just see what can be accomplished. Um, like Mrs. Donner said, we, there's, there's still work to do, there's still things that we can improve, um, but that really was a day to celebrate and I uh, commend Dr. Heron and her staff and everyone that, that is throughout the organization who um, made that day possible, not just to put on the, the event, but who made that day possible for all of those, each, each of those students. Um, and of course, also families and parents and extended families and um, any parent that was dragging their kid across the finish line too, we, we know what that's like and, and so we commend you um, for that. And just wanna wish everyone a happy and safe and really fun summer. Um, I hope everyone can enjoy some, some pool time and some beach or whatever, whatever it is you like to do to relax. Um, teachers and staff have certainly deserved it and our students have deserved it. And so with that, uh, and yeah. Chair, can we just give them an applause too? Absolutely. <laughs> For graduation, as Ms. they didn't miss a beat. They did not miss yes. a beat. I know they lost a lot of weight and had a lot of steps going, but it's awesome. <laughs> Yes, yes, we commend you all. It was a job well done. Um, all right, I will move on to events so that we can let these hardworking people go home. <laughs> oh, we have one, one event on uh, this Thursday on June 20th at 8.30 a.m. The policy committee will meet virtually. And our upcoming meetings. Um, we have a special call meeting on um, June 27th at 8.15 a.m. in room 300 in the Annex. That is simply so that we can approve some personnel actions um, that, that roll in in the next few days before uh, June 30th. Um, then we will have a closed session followed by work session and action items on July 9th. That closed session will begin at 3.30 p.m. in room 300 and the work session and action items will be in the same room at 4.30 p.m. And with that, this meeting is adjourned.